Welcome to this session and in this session, so we will explore more components of a swing. So in the previous session, uh, we have seen few important concepts like uh, J label and the image icon, the text field and the swing button and these are the few other components we, which we were supposed to discuss. Hence, I am putting the discussion of all these components in this current session or the current video. And so now we will just look at the J tab pane. That is, now what exactly this J tab pane is going to be? Now just look at this uh, window. You have been already came across such windows. I'll be having different tabs now. In the single graphics window, I'll be having different pins or the different pins in the form of tabs. When I click on system, you can see few set of components with a label and few set of the check boxes as an element or a component. Similarly, if I click on this tab, I'll be having few other components. If I click on this tab, I'll be a few other components. Now each tab is going to be a pane or a layer for me. That is what we call this as J tab pane. So which is used to manage set of components by linking, linking them with a particular tab. If I'm going to have 100 of components, instead of dumping all those components on a single layer or single pane, now what I'm doing is I'm creating different tabs. In this different tabs, I'm just going to put set of components what I want to manage. That is what the first point is stating and is what we are going to do using the J taped pan. And the content tab tab comes to forefront on selection. That is no content of this audio is behind the selection is in the background. When I click on this tab, obviously the components of this will come to the foreground or the forefront. And the J tab pan defines three constructors which we'll see. And the JTARPAN uses a single selection model, mo model, model, or the model mode. That is what, uh, when I'm going to click on the tab, any one tab should be selected. I cannot select two tabs at a time. Yes, that is where the JTARPAN will always work with single selection mode or the model. And whenever I want to add a tab, so I'm just going to use the function add tab the name what I want to put, the name what I am using for the tab and the component what I may want to add or I am going to add. That is how we are going to or that is what I am going to use for the tape pan. And whenever I want to use the this start pan, so you need to follow these steps. This is what you need to do usually by default or with some sort of implementation. The first step is we need to create an instance of the JF tab pan. That is for each tab I need to create an instance and for this instance, I am just going to add each tab by calling the add tab. For the whatever the components I want to add to a tab, I'll be just calling upon this function and add the tab pane to the content pane. Now, once the tab has been created, now this tab should be added to the content pane. And so, create the tab, create the or add the component for the tab and add that tab for the pin. That's what these three steps you need to follow whenever you want to implement the tab. And for that case, now I'm just going to create a tab pin. So with a zero parameter, and I'm going to add the tab. The tab name is going to be the department. And the second tab, what I'm going to add is the section. And this is going to be the component pin what I'm going to create now. And for this, each I'm going to create a separate class. Now to manage the components, I'm going to use the class for the department tab as DPT pin. And to manage the section, I'm going to have a new class called as SCC pin. And so I'm going to have this class. And so I've created the instance. I'm adding the components to the class references. And I'm going to add this start pin for the given graphics window. And now in this class, each class is going to extend the J panel. It's going to extend the J panel because this is the pane where I want to use or as a panel or as a layer what I want to use with the components. And for this, I'm going to use the J panel. And now this is going to have a constructor which I'm going to add the component for the every tabbed layer or the tab pane. And the first component is going to be the button what I want to have as CSC or I'm going to have a second button as IAC you know, whatever the buttons I was creating using the J button in the previous session. 
and I'm going to add these two buttons for the pane of the panel and for the section panel I'm just going to create a class for section panel extending J panel and now I want to create three buttons over here and three checkboxes over here and so I'm creating J checkboxes as 4A, 4B and 4C and I'm going to add all these three. So now there is no any action. I'm not putting any action for the button of the checkboxes. If you want, you can use the same technique what I have been explained in the previous session. I can, you can bring those implementation and make sure you are going to put some action listener or the item listeners. And so now when I click on this tab, now this is what you're going to use. This is going to happen by default. You need not add any action listener for this. And when I'm going to click on the section tab, I'm going to see these three checkboxes with 4A, 4B and 4C. This is how we are going to make use of the tab pane. And now we'll see the scroll pane now. It is almost similar to the tab pane, but this is of a different layers. But when I say the scroll pane, you can just see the scroll bars. Whenever going to come across the scroll bars, either the vertical one or the horizontal bar. Now, whenever the component, whatever we are going to put the content of the component, if it is going outside the window, you can access those using the scroll pan. By default, if you don't use the scroll pan, by default, the scroll pan will never be added to your applet or to your graphical window. If the content will go out of the content pane, you cannot access this. You will, will just put this on the content and you will be nowhere able to traverse to the content. If you want to traverse, if you want to handle, manage all those components on your graphical window, you need to work with the scroll pins. Hence, to bring in the scroll bar, I am going to talk about the scroll pin. So, handling scrolling of another component. Hence, now, this is a component which we are going to use to scroll and manage the other component in the given pane. Hence, the scroll can be on individual component or group of events, something like this. I am going to have group of events here. Or if it's a text field as a single component, I can bring in the scroll. And if it is a group of components, still I can bring in this. If the object being scrolled is larger in the viewable area, as I told you, and horizontal or vertical scroll bars are automatically provided if we are going to bring in the JS scroll pane. If the content is going outside the viewable area, then the scroll bar will be added. If the content is inside the viewable area and if the scroll is not needed, then the scroll will be automatically removed. That is what this statement is going to stand. Horizontal and vertical scroll bars are automatically provided that is added when it's required removed when it is not required so viewable area of a scroll pen is called the viewport whatever the component right now i am viewing it is going to be the viewport and if i scroll this the viewport is going to change and the j scroll pen is the constructor which we are going to use whenever i am going to add a component or use this component so for this component if I want a scroll pane, just use this constructor. And so this is the point what it says. The J scroll pane will dynamically add or remove a scroll bar as needed. And what is what I told you, the automatically it provides this scroll bar whenever I go into need of this. And the steps what you need to follow is, so create the component to be scrolled, create an instance of the scroll pane, passing it to the object to scroll. Whatever the component you want to scroll, you're going to pass it as a parameter and add the scroll pane to the content pane. So now I'm creating the component. Now directly adding the component to the content pane, I'm going through the scroll pane. That is, I'm going to encapsulate. I'm just going to encapsulate this component inside the scroll pane and I'm going to add that scroll pane to the content pane. This is what I'm going to do whenever I'm going to have the scroll pane. And so now I'm adding this many number of buttons. That is, I'm going to almost have this uh, for loop, the two inner outer for loop, which is going to create me almost 100 buttons. This is going to create me 100 buttons. So 100 buttons, 100 in the row, so 10 in the columns, 10 in the rows. 
and the grid layout what I'm creating is 10 comma 10 if you increase this grid layout the buttons appear smaller and you can fit it into the viewport or the viewable area but now I want to forcefully bring in the scrolling hence I'm creating a small grid layout by 10 comma 10 and whenever the button will go out of this now this grid layout is about this button is 10 comma 10 right now and uh, as if you increase this the number of buttons will be decreased in this viewable area and you can just check it out by varying this value and now this is the for loop where i'm going to add the button so create the instance of the button by passing by just passing the text as button and with the button number this is just the way i'm adding a button so using a for loop so you can easily understand this now once i have been created the component now this is the component what i have been created called as jp now jp is the panel so which is going to hold the 100 buttons that is one component for me now and that one component i am going to use the j scroll scroll pan this i am going to encapsulate now i am going to encapsulate this panel which contains 100 buttons inside the scroll pane and so now and the scrolling will be provided now if i don't do this the scrolling is not provided and i'm going to add the scroll pane so with the border lever to be center i'm going to add the center or you can use any of the variation what you want the alignment with the scrolling bar is when i execute this this is the output what i'm going to get and if I, inc if I decrease the size of this as to 5, you can see I am just going to have the increased size of the button. And you can see over here, now this scroll bar has been automatically removed. This is automatically removed here. Because right now this horizontal uh, bar is not needed as it is removed. But the vertical bar is still upholded. So this is how we are going to make use of the scroll bar. Create the content and wrap that content inside the scroll pan. And so this is all about the scroll pan. So now just look at the list, the J list, what I am going to use, the list of components, what I want to put. And out of this list, I want to choose any one component now. And clicking on any one component, I should be able to say which item you have been choose. And based upon this, I should tell what department you have been used. Hence, I'm going to have J list object items as the constructor what I'm going to use whenever I'm going to create the list of items and the selection of one or more items is possible from the list and the J list is based on two models, the list model and the list selection model. When you want to create the list, I'm going to use the list model and when you want to deal with the selection of the list, I'm going to use list selection model. So this is how the different types of models I'm going to use when I'm creating list model, when I'm selecting it or selecting any of a component, I'm going to use list selection model. And now whatever the list what I'm going to create, I need to I need to wrap up this with the scroll pen. I need to wrap up this because if the list is larger then I sh I'll be not able to get the scrolling. If I want this scrolling, then it should be wrapped. So this is the, by default, is the what the need you require. So always the list will be wrapped with the J scroll pan. And so I'm going to add the list selection listener and the list selection event. The what event has been generated and how exactly it should be handled now. And so now, I'm just going to have this set of methods what I want to use to manage the J list. There is now whenever the value has been changed. That is when I want to change the list, when I want to add up a component, remove a component, that is where we're going to have the value change. And the set selection mode. So now what the selection mode right now I'm going to set for the list what I'm displaying and get the selected index. So out of given list of elements, the element list will start from the index value 0, similar to the array. And so if I select the first element, the index will be 0. If I select the second index, the index will be 1, similar to the array what we are going to use. And if no item is selected, I am going to get this as minus 1. And so now before, before I discuss uh, more about the selected index, 
I just want to give some information about this mode. That is the selection mode. How the selection mode is going to be in what mode. Now, when as I told you from the list, I can select one item or one or more item from the list. As if we want to select only one item from the list, if I want to restrict this only one item should be selected, then this mode should work in single selection. And if I want to have a range of selection, that is if I want to select these two elements, if I want to select from first element to the fifth element and so if I want one single range of selection, I am going to use single interval selection. And if I want to have multiple ranges, this is the range 1, range 2, range 3 and so on. In that case, I am going to use multiple interval selection. That is all the different types of modes what we can work in. And if I talk about selected index, I told you if none of the item is selected, the index, this method will return me minus 1. If any item is selected, depending upon what item you have selected on you have clicked, that particular index value will be returned as a parameter. And now, once I am going to have a selection, now I should know what item has been selected. That is what get selected value. And if any item is selected, I will get the reference of that item. If no item has been selected, I am going to get null of the list or the null from the list. And this is the example of the implementation what we have made over here. And I am going to have the set of strings what I want to create the list. Hence, I am going to create an array of strings. And now set the flow layout and create the list object for the class J list by passing the parameter as this entire array of string that is the department the array which contains this set of strings or the names and i am going to call in the set selection model and the set selection model is going to be the mode is single selection i am going to have single selection now you can choose any one item from the list not the range or not the multiple range and now this should be wrapped with the scroll pane and so create the object for the scroll pane and I'm going to wrap this list inside this scroll pane now. And now what is the preferred size you need to set? What is the preferred size you need to set for this component? That is what the J scroll set preferred size is going to be. Now dimension is going to be 120 and comma 90 in terms of pixels or the number of characters. I'm going to use the number of rows and the number of columns what I want to use. Now, this is the size what I want to use for the scroll pane. And if the list is within this range, then this scroll pane will not be added. If it's outside the range, the scroll pane will be added up. That is what the set prefer size method is going to do it for us. And the label is choose your department and add the list selection listener where I'm going to call the constructor. And this, when the constructor is called, I'm going to check whether the value has been changed or not. If the value has been changed for a particular event, then I'm going to check out the selected index. What is the selected index is going to be? If this method returns minus one, then minus one not equal to minus one, it will fail. And I'm going to print the message as choose your department again, or please choose your department. And if the in if any of item is selected, then the index value will be zero for the first item, one for second, and so on. And so this condition will be true now. And so I'm going to print the current selection is so department. I'm going to check out what is the index value. If it is zero, print it as CAC. Or if it is one, print it as IAC. And I'm going to add the scroll pane. Now you need not add the list. Because you have wrapped the list inside the scroll pane and just add the scroll pane and add the label too. And so I'm just going to have this as the output when I execute this program. And when I click on this list, I'm going to print the message as current selection, that is CIV. This is what the J list is going to do for me. And now if I'm going to talk about the J com combo box. So the J combo box is going to combine or is going to be the combination of the text field 
and the drop down list it's going to be the combination of the both hence the j combo box is going to take the items as i have been just shown you now this is going to be a list instead of displaying the list over here i'll be displaying the list only only clicking upon the drop down and that is where we call this as combo box i have got a i'm just going to have a list that is the text field what i want to fill with and the list text field what you're going to fill now you're not going to type this with you're going to choose from the list from the drop down list that is where we say the combination of these two components i'm going to say what are the number of items or the list of items so create an array and pass it as a parameter and this is going to work on a combo box model and even the mutable combo box model that means you can select any one item at any point of time you cannot select a range of items what you have done in the list or the list component and whenever i want to add the component i am just going to add the component for the object whenever i require but this can be used only when you are using the mutable combo box model if you are using a combo box model you cannot add the item whenever you want you can use this only it's going to be a mutable combo box model and i am just going to use the method to check what item has been selected using get selected item hence the implementation is again the same way create the set of strings and the flow layout and create the object or the or, or the interface or an object for the class j combo box and by passing the parameter as the array of strings and add this combo box so directly i am adding over here so i don't need a scroll pan here as i am not wrapping this with the scroll pan and add a action listener so if an item is selected i am going to set the text as your department is i am going to print what exact department has been chosen and i am going to have j label so just display the table as your department is and add that label and when i execute this uh, program this is the output what i am going to get and when i click on this drop down box you can see the list will be arrived and now any one item can be chosen now if i click on this ece i am going to get the output as your department is ece and this is how i am going to make use of the j list and the j combacks or the j combo box and next we'll see what is the j table is going to do and this j table uh, is somewhat a complex topic in swing but uh, we'll see the few basics about this so if i start discussing about the j table this j table itself will take a complete session now i don't want to go such in deep discussion of but the j table but we will see what are the important or the major parts of the j table is going to be and as you know the table it's just set of rows and columns of data that is what the j table will be always you to display the rows and columns of the data something like this i'll be having a headers for each column and i'll be having the records which is going to be form of the row hence the column borders can be resized if i use j table and if you manage it properly if you manage this and if you are able to implement this you can just drag and drag here and there or left and right so that you can adjust the column size and uh, drag the column to new position i can just move this entire column to new position if you try to implement it appropriately so which i am not going to show you in this session because as i told you it takes an entire session if i want to discuss completely about j table and so can change the data within a cell so if you want you can change by double clicking or whatever the process you have learned until now you can make use of those logics and implementation where you can change in the data of within a cell so swings most complicated component as i just told and if i want to make use of the table i need to import the dot table from the swing and will not provide any scrolling capability of its own now whatever the scroll bar you are seeing here it is not from the j table component this you are seeing because yes we have wrapped the j table inside the j scroll pen component this is what you are going to see this bar over here 
So now, uh, when I want to implement this J table, I'll be as I told you, I'll be not showing you the complete implementation of this J table, but only the basic one what I want to have, only the display of the table data what I want to display. And for that, I'm going to have the constructor. For this constructor, I'm going to have a table or the data. The data contains this set of information. Hence, I'm going to use two dimensional array. So starting from RAM, the first string, the second string, the first integer, and so on. I'm going to have this as two dimensional array. I'm going to have n rows and I'm going to have n columns. And I'm going to have the column headers, which is going to be always a single dimension. I'll be having only one row, whereas I'll be having n number of rows and n columns for the data, hence it is two dimension. And this is going to use any one of this model. Either this will be using table model. When I want to display the data, I'll be using table model. When I want to display the header, I'll be using table column model. And when I want to work with the selection model, which I'll be not discussing in this session. So if I want the selection, if I want to change the data, if I want to change the column, if I want to drag the width of the column, whatever the active action want to be done, it will be happening with the least selection model. And this will generate me least selection event. And whenever I want to work on the any of this active component in the table, I should work with the least selection event. And the table model event is what you are viewing the data. Only if you want to display the table, make use of table model event. And which I'll be doing in this example implementation, what I'm going to show you within, within, in a few minutes. Fine, so now these are the steps which you need to follow. That is, I need to create an instance of the J table the first step and create a J, J scroll pan object so that I can bring in the scrolling and specify the table as the object to scroll that is I am going to wrap the scroll or the table inside the scroll and add the table to the scroll pane as yes, that is what I am wrap, wrapping it out and add the scroll pane to the content pane that is what I am going to usually do with the scroll pens. And this is the example of the particular J table what I'm going to use. I'm going to create the column. It is going to be a single row with as name, USN and the marks. And I'm just going to have the data, a two dimensional array. I'm going to have the first row separated with the second row, third row and so on. I'm going to have this many data as what I want to put. And once this is done, I'm going to use J table, table and creating instance of the class by passing the data as the first parameter and the column adds as the second parameter and I'm going to add the table. Now just observe here, just observe what we have done here. So we have just created a table and we have just added the table to the GUI as a component. So when I've done this, you can see the header is not visible and even the last data is also not visible. It's out of the viewport. So now I've been, I've been not wrapped. Intentionally I've done this over here so that you can understand what the importance of the scroll pan. I've done it intentionally and you can see. You can see that I have not wrapped this table inside a scroll pan and this is what is happening here. And the table will never by default will provide its own scrolling. If I want scrolling, I need to bring in that. Hence, I am going to modify this program now and I am going to create a scroll pan now and I am going to bring in the table inside the scroll pan. I am going to wrap the table in the scroll pan and now add the scroll pan to the content pan. Fine, instead of directly adding the table, I am adding through the scroll pan and this is the what output you are going to get now. I'm going to get a scroll pan. So now I can see the header, I can see the content, and if some content are missing over here, I can just drag the scroll bar down and I can see the content what I want to visualize on the screen. I can just drag this and I can see the other content too. And this is how the table along with the scroll pan is going to work with. And so the few components what I wanted to discuss Hence, so clearly understand this and try to implement.
try to implement try to execute this and try to explore more so don't stop exploring of swing at this point itself use all this component think about a application think about a application and try to and try to bring in all this component into one single application something like i can build a calculator so think about all this component and combination of this component and build one single java swing application which will which will make you to build a calculator or will make you to build a music player so think about a small swing application try to bring in all this component or try to explore few more components and try to bring into your java application so that you can clearly understand what all this is going to be hence so this three components which have been discussed from the previous session and this components what have been put in this session so i hope you have been understand this hence so thank you for this session